election. Let's bring in our brain trust on the Sunday Democratic pollster Fred Yang, NBC News senior political reporter Perry Bacon, and Republican National Committee National Press Secretary Kirsten Kukowski. Boy, we've got a, a high-powered brain trust today, and I, I wish we had all day to talk with you. We'll do it in the next nine minutes here, though. Perry, first to you. Is this the October surprise? I don't think it is, Richard. I think it is an issue that's going on in the campaigns. There's a lot of debates going on right now, so candidates are being asked by journalists about it. But if you look at the polling data, Gallup did a survey this week. What it showed was about 37 percent of, of uh, Republicans felt like the government was doing a good job handling Ebola versus 71 percent of Democrats did. So that, what that tells me is that people are viewing this in a bit of a partisan lens, meaning if you think President Obama does good things well in general, you think he's handling Ebola well, and if you're a Republican, and you tend to think he's not handling as well. So I don't see it having a huge shift in where people stand. Christian, what do you say? Well, I actually think it's part of a much larger issue that the Democrats are facing right now, which is there aren't many things that are actually going well. So there's just the sense of discomfort, whether it be the economy, whether it be Ebola, whether it be ISIS and, and general security issues. So I think I agree that it's, it's not the driving force to get people to the polls in the next nine days, but I do think that it's something that's weighing on their mind. And I actually think one thing when you look at the polling is where this might matter is with independence, where the Democrats in, in states like Iowa and Colorado Colorado in North Carolina, they're already starting to, to go away from the Democrats and independents. And so I think that that's actually going to maybe be a, a key factor in the next couple of days. So, so Fred, you, you know this uh, as you're putting together those exit polls, uh, you know, pollsters putting together uh, those series of questions. And you, you normally have an open spot, right, uh, for a late breaking piece of news uh, for that exit poll. Is Ebola now the front runner for that spot? I think clearly right now Ebola is a front runner for that X spot on the um, issue agenda. Look, I, I agree with both both of my panelists, Perry and Christian. I, I don't think this will be the driving issue that um, on November 4th, or actually the nine days before November 4th, for those voters who have early vote states, I don't think this is what they vote on um, and their choice for governor or senate or congress. But what I do think this has happened, it's sort of. Um, drowned out some of the other stories um, that could have um, been out there to help influence voters. You know, in the NBC News Wall Street Journal poll we took earlier um, last week, mm -hmm. um, the Ebola crisis was the number one most paid attention to news story, domestic or international, in over five years. Uh, to you here on this, Perry, uh, this is from Governor Scott, a statement on mandatory, their mandatory 21-day 21 21 day health monitoring. Uh, and it, he says, quote, I want to be clear that we are taking this aggressive action at the state level out of an abundance of caution in the absence of much needed Ebola classification information from the CDC. That's uh, coming from not only the governor there, but also a candidate. Uh, and as you know so well here, Perry, it's, it's, it's a close race. And so we're, are, are we seeing this issue that Fred is describing? Let's talk about this issue. Let's, let's make it part of the election because it pushes away other issues uh, that might move the needle the way a candidate doesn't want it to move. No, uh, Richard, the way I see it is you see the governors, uh, Andrew Cuomo, Chris Christie, they're not worried about their politics. Cuomo's winning by a lot of points. Chris Christie's not on the ballot this year. I think what you're seeing more is the politicians tend to, it's be always better to overreact than underreact. One of the critiques of Obama is he doesn't do enough often or he takes too long. So I think you're seeing politicians behave naturally in terms of they want to seem like they're in front of this issue and quarantines and travel bans are seeming like you're in front of the issue. That's it. We should, like, we should listen to the scientists carefully. They seem to be saying the opposite. Quarantines and travel bans are not a good idea. So we should not, we should be careful not to mix the policy too much with the politics. Kirsten, uh, then are is this issue being over politicized? Uh, is there a concern here that the, the direction and the focus of what needs to be done, the CDC, uh, the Ebola response coordinator, all of the, the efforts that are being made, now it's, it's being redirected away from where the energy needs to be and that is to, to, to help solve the situation? Well, I don't think that I don't think it's being over politicized. I think it's a conversation we need to have, and I think that it's it's a lot of it has to do with just kind of this the the idea of, the, of you know what can government help us with, um, and I think that that's a very good conversation for us to be having right now. Um, and I think that that's where the Democrats are really struggling because, like Perry was saying before, the president really was not out in front of this issue. He did not have that conversation with the country and, and tell voters and tell Americans, um, you know, what he was going to do to be on top of this issue, and I think that that's why we're here talking about this nine uh -huh. days out from the midterm election. 
Uh, Fred, to you on this, is there an issue in the past that might parallel what we're seeing right now here in October? I mean, I'm, I'm sure there is. I'm, my, you know, um, Kirsten and Perry could think, can probably think of one also. I, I think usually, um, Richard, there are foreign policy crises that just sort of pop up. But look, I think, I think um, issues like Ebola, events like Ebola, are probably going to be par for the course for the 21st century. You know, we have, we have cyber crimes. We have, um, you know, a, a terrorist, you know, all over um, terrorist um, issues um, all over the world. I think that um, what's what's surprising about elections actually is when there is not an October surprise. Mm -hmm. And look, I think um, I think in terms of the politicization of this issue, it it is a big issue that a lot of people are paying attention to, and we're in election season. Th there's the. Uh picture of the president, uh, Perry, of Nina Pham uh, with the president here, uh, and they do embrace each other. What's your thought about that? The president is trying to reduce, you know, make people feel more calm. The whole idea of bringing her to the White House is to suggest the president of the United States is here with someone with who did recently had Ebola, mm -hmm. and he is not concerned about that. Hence, you should not think Ebola is going to be spread because you're on the subway. I think it is important. The president is trying to communicate that most people are not in danger of, uh, of contracting Ebola anytime mm -hmm. soon. I think that is an important message. Does that matter in this kind of polit politicized universe? I'm not sure. To answer your question, Richard, one way to think about this also is, remember Hurricane Sandy happened very near the 2012 right, elections. Right. That was a big October surprise. I would argue again, though, did it change many people's votes? I don't mm -hmm. think so. I think Obama was going to win and still won. Uh, Kirsten, to you on this, uh, and I'm going to shift gears a little here because we are talking about uh, the, 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 less than uh, two weeks before we have uh, the, the midterm elections, and we, we, we have nine states, according to China. at this moment, uh, NBC News political director saying that, you know, they're just too close at this moment to, to, to make a call on, and then we also have the, the new NBC News poll that shows that they're all, of the six states that they were looking at, five of them are, are within the margin of error here, uh, again, too close to call. What do you take from these latest pieces of information, Kirsten, about, you know, again, less than two weeks, and it, it is within the margin of error? Yeah, I think that it's going to be very, very close. Um, I think that that's where our, our ground game and all the people that we have had out there working for us, talking to voters for the last year and a half, is really going to pay off, has been paying off. If you look at where we stand in Iowa with early and absentee voting, um, we are doing much, 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 much better than we ever have historically. We shouldn't even be having a conversation about us being ahead of the Democrats on early vote in Iowa, and we are. That's spectacular for us. Colorado, same thing. And I think if you look at your polling from this morning, um, and what I alluded to before is where, where these uh, Democrats stand with independent voters, and I think that that's going to be um, a very big deal over the next nine days. Fred, what are you watching? Uh, you just heard the results that we have from our poll. Uh, I'm watching, as Kirsten said, actually, because um, we may be in different parties, but we look at the same numbers and trends. I think the vote among independents will be important. I think the other thing we're looking at also, again, based on some of the national polling we've done for NBC News and Wall Street Journal, is just who is interested and who will actually vote in November. And look, I think um, you know, a lot of commercials, I, I saw a piece a couple days ago, one of the most expensive midterms ever. A um, lot of messages out there, but I do think for the next nine days, the big determinant factor in this election will be the ground game, is the stuff that doesn't get reported on, the stuff that's happening every single minute of every single hour of every single day is who gets to the polls and which party is working hard to get their people to the polls. Perry, uh, dig into that big uh, chest of information that you've got because you're following places that we're just showing all the data on. Which one characterizes, you think, what is happening in, during this midterm election? The big shift you've seen in the polling this week has been Kansas, where you saw initially it looked like the independent Greg Orman could win that state, mm -hmm. and now the polling is moving toward the incumbent Pat Roberts, and that's big. Republicans, can, they can hold that seat. That's a big one. The other thing you're seeing, if you look at the polling in Iowa, uh, New Hampshire, and Colorado, those are three states Obama won pretty decisively in 2008. And in all those places, the Republican could win. And that's the story of the election is Obama's numbers among independents going down enough to where the Democrats could lose in three states. If you asked me a year ago, I would have said they would have won all of those. And now they might lose. New Hampshire, probably not. But Iowa and Colorado, they could easily lose on Election Day. It's go time for Perry Bacon, as well as for Kirsten and uh, Fred. Thank you all three for stopping by today for our brain trust and really giving us a keen insight into what we're seeing today.
Appreciate it. Thank Let's you. Flash